Welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Senator Briscoe, and today we will be covering 2 Chronicles 23 through 24 and John 15. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Second Chronicles 23 In the 17th year, uh, Judea showed his strength. He made a covenant with the commanders of units of a hundred. Zerai, uh, son of Jerome, Ishmael, son of Jerom, Johanan, and Zerah, son of Obed, Messiah, son of Adaiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zechariah. They went throughout Judea and gathered the Levites and the heads of Israelite families from all the towns. When they came to Jerusalem, the whole assembly made a covenant with the king at the temple of God. Jehoiada said to them, The king's son shall reign as the Lord promised concerning the descendants of David. Now, this is what you are to do. A third of you priests and Levites who are going on duty on the Sabbath are to keep watch at the doors. A third of you at the royal palace and a third at the foundation gates. Now, and all the others are to be in the courtyards of the temple of the Lord. No one is to enter the temple of the Lord except the priests and the Levites on duty. They may enter because they are consecrated, but all of the others are to observe the Lord's command not to enter. The Levites are to station themselves around the king, each with weapons in hand, and anyone who enters the temple is to be put to death. Stay close to the king wherever he goes. The Levites and all the men of Judea did just as Jehoiada the priest ordered. Now each one took his men, those who were going on duty on the Sabbath, and those who were going off duty for Jehodia, whom the priests had not released any of the divisions. And then he gave the commanders of units of hundred the spears, and the large and small shields that had belonged to King David. And that were in the temple of God. He stationed all the men, each with his weapon in his hand, around the king, near the altar, and the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehodia and his sons brought out the king's son and put the crown on him. And they presented him with a copy of the covenant and proclaimed him king. They anointed him and shouted, Long live the king! Now, when Athelia heard the noise of the people running and cheering the king, she went to them at the temple of the Lord. She looked, and there was the king standing by his pillar at the entrance. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, and musicians with their instruments were leading the praises. And then Athelia tore her robes and shouted, Treason! Treason! Jehodiah the priest sent out the commanders of units of a hundred who were in charge of the troops and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks and put to 
a sword anyone who follows her. For the priests had said, Do not put her to death at the temple of the Lord. And so they seized her as she reached the entrance of the porch gate on the palace grounds, and there they put her to death. Jehodiah then made a covenant that he, the, the people, and the king would be the Lord's people. All the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and the idols, and they killed Matthew, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. And then Jehodiah placed the oversight of the temple of the Lord in the hands of the Levitical priests, to whom David had made assignments in the temple, to present the burnt offerings of the Lord as written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing, as David had ordered. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple, so that no one who was in any way unclean might enter. He took with him the commanders of hundreds, the nobles, the rulers of the people, and all the people of the land, and he brought the king down from the temple of the Lord. They ran into the palace through the upper gates and seated the king on the royal throne. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was clean, clean, calm, because Athelia had been slain with the sword. Joash repairs the temple. Second Chronicles 24 Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem forty years. His mother's name was Zebiah. She was from Beersheba. Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years of Jehodiah, the priest. And Jehodiah chose two wives for him, and he had sons and daughters. Sometime later, Joash decided to restore the temple of the Lord. He called together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go to the towns of Jehodia and Judea and collect the money due annually from all Israel to repair the temple of your God and do it now. But the Levites did not act at once. And therefore the king summoned Jehodia, the chief priest, and said to him, why haven't you required the Levites to bring in from Judea and Jerusalem the taxes imposed by Moses, the servant of the Lord, and by the assembly of Israel for the tent of the covenant law? Now the sons of the wicked woman, Athelia, had broken into the temple of God and had used even its sacred objects for the ballast. Well, at the king's command, a chest was made and placed outside at the gate of the temple of the Lord. A proclamation was then issued to Judea and Jerusalem that they should bring to the Lord the taxes that Moses, the servant of God, had required of Israel in the wilderness. All the officials and all the people brought their contributions gladly, dropping them into the chest until it was full. Whenever the chest was brought in by the Levites to the king's officials, and they saw that there was a large amount of money, the royal secretary and the officers of the chief priests would come and empty the chest and carry it back to its place. They did this regularly, and they collected a great amount of money. The king and Jehodiah gave it to those who carried out the work required for the temple 
of the Lord. They hired masons and carpenters to restore the Lord's temple and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the temple. The men in charge of the work were diligent and the repairs progressed under them. They rebuilt the temple of God according to its original design and reinforced it. And when they had finished, they brought the rest of the money to the king and Jehodia, and with it were made articles for the Lord's temple, articles for the service, and for the burnt offerings, and also dishes and other objects of gold and silver. As long as Jehodia lived, burnt offerings were presented continually in the temple of the Lord. Now Jehodia was old and full of years, and he died at the age of a hundred and thirty. He was buried with the kings in the city of David because of the good he had done in Israel for God and his temple, the wickedness of Joash. After the death of Jehodia, the officials of Jehodia came and paid homage to the king, and he listened to them. They abandoned the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and worshipped Asherah poles and idols. Because of their guilt, God's anger came on Judea and Jerusalem. Although the Lord sent prophets to the people to bring them back to him, and through, uh, though they had testified against them, they would not listen. And then the Spirit of God came on Zechariah, son of Jehodia, the priest. And he stood before the people and he said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands? You will not prosper because you have forsaken the Lord and he has forsaken you. But they plotted against him, and by order of the king, they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Josh did not remember the kindness Zachariah's father, Jehodia, had shown him, but killed his son, who said, as he lay dying, May the Lord see this, and call you to account. At the turn of the year, the army of Aram marched against Joash, in, and it invaded Judea and Jerusalem, and it killed all the leaders of the people. They sent all the plunder to their king in Damascus, and although the Armians' army had come with only a few men, the Lord delivered into their hands a much larger army, because Judea had forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Judgment was executed on Joash. And when the Armians withdrew, they left Joash severely wounded. His officials conspired against him for murdering the son of Judea, the priest. I'm sorry, Jehodiah, the priest. And they killed him in his bed. So he died and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Those who conspired against him were Zebed, son of Shimeath, and Ammonite, a woman, and Jehoshaphat, son of Shimerith, a Moabite woman. The accounts of his sons, the uh, many prophecies about him, and the records of the restoration of the temple of God are written in the atonations on the book of the kings. And Amaziah, his son, succeeds him as king. That was Second Corinthians. 
chapter, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles 23 through 24. And now we will be turning to John 15. Have I been saying for instance all this time? It's possible. A Freudian slip. Okay, here we go. John, okay, the vines, the vine and the branches. John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. And you are ready and clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you may joy, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And greater love has no one than this, to lie down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends, and if you do what I command, I no longer call you servants, because as servants does not, a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, so that you might go and be bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. The word hates the, de the world hates the disciples. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hates me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master, and if they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. And they will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. And if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well, and if I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. Both this is 
to fulfill what is written in the, their law. They hated me without reason. The works of the Holy Spirit. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. And that was John 15, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Second Chronicles 25 through 27 and John 16. So, thanks for tuning into the Bible today. And as always, you know, God loves you. Oh, I shouldn't do it, Briscoe. I have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. All right, that's it. It's the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and share. God bless you.